In this lab, the front-end server is emulating a CDN, and it's caching a static asset from the origin, the back-end server, to improve performance. And to solve the lab, you need to perform a web cache poisoning attack in three steps. First, you need to detect and confirm the CLTE vulnerability. Then you need to find an on-site redirect and turn it into an off-site redirect. And then finally, probably the trickiest part of the lab is you need to poison the front-end server with a 302 off-site redirect to our payload, just as the cache for the tracking.js asset on the front-end server expires. And I found a consistent way to pull this off, and I'll share that with you in this video. Let's get started. I'm on the homepage of the lab here, and the first thing you want to do is detect the possible CLTE vulnerability. So I'm going to switch to burp and use the timing technique to do that. So I'm going to go to proxy and HTTP history and grab the get slash request for the root endpoint here and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. And I'm going to go to the right side under the inspector window and downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1. And then I'm going to go back to the left and change the request method over to post. And then I'm going to remove any unnecessary headers, so anything up from content type and underneath the host header. I'm also going to go to the request settings here, and I'm going to turn off update content length automatically because we want to control that ourselves. And then I'm also going to show new line characters because that's kind of handy for request smuggling in general. Next thing I'm going to do is add a transfer encoding chunk header. And then I'm going to separate the request headers from the body with a carriage return line feed and send a chunk of size 3, ABC, followed by the letter X, which is an invalid chunk size, followed by a new line. And then I'm going to switch up the content length to be 6, and then send this request. And if the response uh, shows a timeout, and you can already see it's taken a long time to get back to us, and in a few seconds we will get the timeout message. And that is a very strong indication here that the endpoint that we're targeting is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. And the next thing we want to do is go back to the left to the request here and confirm the CLTE vulnerability. So I'm going to delete what we had in the request body before and replace it with a terminating chunk first to indicate to the backend server that our chunked message has ended. And then we're going to poison the backend server with a get request for something that doesn't exist using HTTP 1.1 followed by a new line. We also want to set a content type and a content length. So I'm just going to paste that here, follow it up with a new line to separate our smuggled request headers from our smuggled request body. I'm going to set a request body parameter of x for a value of none, and then change the content length to 3. It can remain at 6, but the minimum value is 3 because we have two bytes here, x and the equal sign. And we want at least one byte of the follow-up request, the normal request, to be appended to our smuggled request body here. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the request settings and turn on update content length automatically again. Because we suspect this is a CLTE vulnerability, we just want the front end to ser server to forward the entire request to the backend server. And uh, update content length automatically will take care of us for that uh, throughout the rest of the lab. And that's it. So this will become our attack request. So I'm going to rename this tab to attack request. And then we're going to send a copy of this request to repeater again. And this will become our normal request. And then I'm going to delete what we have here in the body together with the transfer encoding chunk header. And instead in the body, I'm going to send some fake data. So request body parameter foo for a value of bar. And I'm going to send this just to make sure that we get back a 200 OK. And now if we go back to our attack request and we send it, we get back a 200 OK. And now when we send our normal request, we get a 404 not found because it's unable to find this um, resource that doesn't exist. So this confirms the CLTE vulnerability. And the next thing we want to do is find the on-site redirect. So I'm going to go to one of the blog posts here. And then if I go to the bottom, there should be a next post link here. So I'm going to click that, and we get forwarded to the next post. And I'm going to go to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history and get the get request for the next post ID uh, after 4 here, after which we get redirected to post ID 5. So I'm going to send this next request to repeater and switch to repeater and just send this request as is. Yep, we get the 302 found. Now, the interesting thing is, of course, if we edit the um, host header in any way and try to turn this into an offsite redirect, uh, so I'm just going to remove one letter here and send it, we get a invalid host, we get an error. That's because the front end server is rejecting our request because it needs a valid host header to know uh, which back end server this request should be forwarded to. So to turn this into an offsite redirect, we can combine it with our request smuggling. So I'm going to copy the get request here. I'm going to go back to our attack request. 
And instead of the get request that we have here, I'm just going to paste the get request for the next post ID, and then send this. And we get a 200 OK. But if we follow it up with our normal request, then we get a 302 found. And you can see our normal request gets redirected to post ID number five here. And if I go back to the attack request and just add a arbitrary host header, so let's say host for a value of foobar.com, and then send it, and then go back to our normal request and send it as well, we get a 302 found to foobar.com and post ID 5. So we've successfully turned this into an offsite redirect. So now let's take this offsite redirect one step further. And if we go to proxy and HTTP history, we can see that there is get request here for tracking.js. And if I send it to repeater and switch to repeater and send this request again, you can see that this is a request for a static asset tracking.js, and it has an age here and a max age of 30. So if I keep sending this request, the age goes up in seconds. So it's now at 10 seconds, now at 12, and it goes all the way up to 30. And what we can do is right before the front end server is expiring the cache of the tracking.js asset, so after 30 seconds, we'll send an attack request and poison the backend with a request that the backend will respond to with a 302 redirect to a slash post URI path on our exploit server, where we will host a JavaScript payload that will trigger an alert pop up containing document.cookie. And if we do that successfully, then for 30 seconds until the cache expires, the front end server will reply with a 302 redirect to our payload on the exploit server for any get requests to the tracking.js asset. So let's do that and go to the exploit server, wait for it to load. And then we're going to modify the path here instead of slash exploit, it should be slash post. And then we're going to switch the type here, content type to text JavaScript. And then in the body, we want to put an alert for document.cookie and end the line with a semicolon and then store this. And then I'm going to copy the host header portion here of our URL and switch back to burp and then go to our attack request and make sure where we had foobar.com before, we want our new host header for our exploit server. And then we're going to go to tab number nine here, which has our tracking.js file. So I'm going to send it, and you can see it has age two now. And what we're going to do, let me actually move that tab closer to the attack request and keep refreshing. So once we hit um, age 27, I'm going to switch to the attack request tab and send it, and then switch back to the tab here for tracking.js and send it as well, so that this request is appended to the prefix that we've poisoned the backend with in the attack request. So that's now, go to the attack request, send it, go back here, and send it. And you can see the 302 found now, where it's redirecting us to the exploit server. So let me switch back to the lab and refresh the page. And you can see we get the alert pop up, and we saw the lab. So now anytime any visitor is requesting the tracking.js file for 30 seconds uh, for as long as the front end server is caching the redirect to our own payload on the exploit server, the visitor will actually load in our payload on the exploit server. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for watching.